Uh, hello everyone, I'm Huang Yingqiu, and today I will share our work on uplift modeling in the intelligent marketing conducted by the Chongqing University and Meituan. I will break it down into the four parts. Uplift modeling aims to estimate the potential incremental gains of individuals made under different interventions, and the interventions could be discount or coupons or advertisement. Uh, simply put, the traditional CVR models predict the likelihood of conversion and uplift the model they are deeper into how CVR varies and uh, when the advertisements are sure or not. For instance, if you have two users and with the advertisement CVR of 1.8 and 1.1% and the post post advertisement CVR of 3.6 and 3.5% and only choose one user to uh, get the display in the advertisement, who should we choose? Yeah, absolutely, we should choose the user 2. Even though user 1 has a higher CVR, but the user 2's uplift is higher, and the, total u and the total CVR of all users is higher. And this method helps identify the user sensitivity to the advertisement, thus optimizing the allocation efficiency. Uh, typically, the e-commerce company usually follows the two-stage process. The first generates the uh, uplift score of each user and then uh, optimize the allocation under the budget. Existing methods such as a single model and a two model calculate the uplift score uh, through subtraction. Many deep learning methods serve as their fundamental models. However, the first two uh, limitations. First, there are notable absence of uplift modeling uh, through the convenience confounder. Yeah, I'm sorry. For example, when users receive a uh, high-value coupons, the CTR rises, but due to their stringent uh, usage conditions, the CTR decreases. Thus, the final CTCVR is uncertain. Simply, when users see unattractive creatives, the CTR decreases, but upon clicking, the CVR may increase due to the high quality. The CTCVR is also uncertain. This is because treatment effects affects the task in the chain differently, and the uplift score in the CTR and CVR are not entirely consensed. Only focusing on the end task of the chain will lead to the bias results. Yeah. And secondly, on the utilization of treatment, the key of uplift modeling is to capture user behavior changes on the various treatments. And the common methods involve using attention method for treatment modeling, uh, which are vector levels intervention methods lacking the flexibility are needed to capture the facial changes on the various treatments. Therefore, our method primarily addresses the two challenges. We validated the chain bias on the real data by randomly uh, partitioning data and calculating the actual uplift score in each segment. Uh, we can see that the figure, the CVR uplift were computed on the click set, and the CT CVR is computed on the impression set. Uh, from this figure, we can see that the trend in CT CVR and the CVR uplift are not consensus. Ignoring the treatment's impact on preceding task leads to the bias results. To tackle this challenge, we introduced a novel model named eCup, comparison two paths, the ECE net and the TE net. ECENet incorporates task information to better capture user behavior changes across the different tasks. Meanwhile, the TENet achieves adaptive embedding adjustment on the various treatments through the bit level feature interactions. The input of ECENet includes task information and the treatment enhanced embedding, and the treatment has embedding is the output of the TENet. Where all tasks share the parameters, which alleviates the data sparsity of conversion task. And we inject task information into every layer of the DNN tower through TAE gate to ensure the model learns treatment impact on the different task. The TAE gate is an MLP with a multi head attention. And for model training, we use the click and the conversion data for parameters updates. After training, uh, it's treated as a single model and the uplift score are uh, obtained through subtraction. Uh, it's mean in the inference stage, the user features uh, uh, consist and the treatment feature could be zero or one. And we can get the two independent predict score. And through subtraction, we can get the uplift. The input of TENet is treatment information and other features and the output is the treatment enhanced embedding. 
Uh, it consists of two paths, TAU and TGET. Uh, for TAU, uh, we use self attention networks to get the natural representation of feature and get extract treatment features through an MLP. Uh, then perform MNOS dot product to make the feature different representation on the tra different treatments. However, completely disregarding the original feature may lose some information. So we combine the feature and uh, the original feature and the feature obtained from TAU through TEGET with a certain weights. Where the weights are obtained through another TAU with independent parameters. Yeah. And our proposed uh, TNet has two main advantages. The first, uh, balancing initial and treatment aware embedding, efficiency, adapting feature on the different treatments. And the second, we use a bit level feature interaction to achieve treatment enhanced in a more granular way uh, compared to the vector level methods. We test on two datasets where the critical is a public dataset and the empty leaf is released datasets from Meituan. Uh, to eliminate the impact of confounding factors on uplift modeling, we collected it from random uh, controlled trials. The causal graph as shown in this figure uh, uh, ensure the uplift score are only, by, are only influenced by the treatment, eliminate the impact of the user distribution. And our data sets contains rich feature treatments and the label information. It's suitable for multitask research such as CTR and severe predictions and uplift modeling. And you can get the data sets through the following link. The evaluation metrics for the uplift are AUUC and Chini, aiming to assess the gap between the predict uplift and the actual uplift. We compared our method uh, for CTCVR and the CVR task. Uh, for fair comprising, we conducted a uh, two independent models for the all baselines, learning the CTR and the CVR to calculate the uplift of CTCVR task. And the CTR model is trained on the impression set and the CVR model is trained on the click set. It can be seen that our proposed ECAP achieved mostly optimal results. The method like ANU and EFN, uh, which considered treatments interaction modeling, achieved suboptimal results. We constructed four variants to study the effects of each complement, uh, where the second with attention represents use attention method instead of TNET for treatment modeling. It can be observed that with, without ECE net, uh, the model's performance is worse because it's trained on the click set and directly applied to the uh, impression scenario, indicating the importance uh, of the entire chain uplift modeling. And we also developed the ECAP on Meituan and conducted a uh, two week AB test. From the results, it can be observed that under the same budget condition, ECAP achieves significant improvements. Uh, in multiple metrics and further choosing effectiveness of the ECAP. In concluding, we first define and address the chain bias problem in uplift modeling and propose the ECAP model to model the conversion funnels, uh, which can be convenient to transfer to other chain uplift modeling scenarios. And finally, we release a large scale unbiased dataset for the future research. Yeah, thank you for your attention.